Hello and very welcome back to our module on this basics of electricity course and we are now running our module number three. The title of the module is components of an electrical circuit. So there are variety of electronic or say electrical components or say devices and we are going to see what kind of components they are, what they do, their functionality, and what is their main role. So let us move to the overview. In this particular module, we will see what are the electrical components available in. So there are a range of uh, electrical components available. We would see types of those components, we will see their symbols, we will just review a couple of them and we will not focus much on the details. And we'll see the importance of these components in a circuit. So there are two types of components. One is called as active components and another is a passive component. So active components are generally those which needs an external signal sources in order for them to function. So if the components or devices have to work, generally they need an external signal sources. Those signal sources could be a voltage source or a current source. And these sources, the signal sources are either DC or AC in nature. So you can see that AC or DC sources can be used to power active devices or active components. For example, a DC signal source would be uh, batteries which are used in our cell phones or other electronic and electrical gadgets or even uh, electrical appliances, you can have the AC voltage sources, for example, hair dryer, et cetera, et cetera. So another definition of active components is that these components or devices are called active components because they introduce gain or energy into the circuit. They inject an energy into the circuit. So we are going to see in a moment what these components which are called as active components, how they inject energy or introduce gain into the circuit. In other words, how they control the gain or energy into the circuit. And that's why we refer to them as an active components or devices. So the examples of the active components are transistors, integrated circuits, ICs in short. Uh, in particular, there are range of integrated circuit, for example, op-amp, operational amplifier, filter, attenuator, oscillator, all these ICs are available into the market, as you can see that. So these uh, ICs, right here also an ICs, operational amplifier or oscillator, etc., etc., or a simple standalone devices, for example, transistor. These are all referred to as active components. Why? Because they have, uh, first thing, they are powered by an external signal source. You need an external energy in order for these devices or components to work. And in addition to that, these components or devices are called active devices or components because they have the ability to modulate the energy of the circuit into which these devices or components are employed. So you see that active components, they are used for amplification, filtering, oscillation, rectification, etc., etc. So now let us uh, focus our uh, attention on one of the active component that is called as transistor. So you see that there are different types of transistor with the different sizes and the packages, very small right here, then the medium size and the large one. This is called as power transistor. So uh, different size and uh, packages names are SOT, uh, TO92, TO126, and TO3, okay? Now, the transistor, the basic transistor is called as bipolar device. It is a bipolar because the current conduction in these transistors is 
taken place by two types of charge carriers. One is called as electron, other one is hole. And that's why they are called as bipolar devices, okay? Okay, so uh, because uh, the current conduction is taken place by two types of charged carriers, electrons and holes, there are two types of the bipolar transistor, NPN and the PNP. As you can see that these transistors are used in uh, amplification and filtering. So they have the ability to control the gain of the circuit, to modulate the energy of the circuit. That's why these are called as active components. So right here, you see that that's a symbol for the NPN transistor. That's the symbol for the PNP transistor. So here you see uh, the direction of the arrow shows the direction of the currents. Okay, so here you see that this is the collector current IC that flows. This is the base current IB. And this is the current that is coming out of the emitter is called as IE, that is emitter current. Direction of the currents in the PNP transistor would be, this is your IE, that is an emitter current, that is your collector current IC, and this is your base current IB. So you see that the direction of the all the currents in PNP is opposite to the direction of all the currents in NPN. Uh, similarly, you can write that this is the collector terminal, this is the base terminal, and this is an emitter terminal. Here also, this is an emitter terminal, this is the base terminal, and this is the collector terminal. Okay, so having said that, we can move to the next slide. Now we talked about the active components. It's time to talk about the passive components. So here, what you see that uh, the definition of the passive component is that they do not introduce any gain into the circuit. They do not introduce or inject or control or modulate an energy into the circuit. Okay, so best example is a diode. Uh, it's a simple PN junction semiconductor device which has got two pins. One is called as anode, another is called as cathode. So there are variety of diodes. So this is a simple diode and the uh, definition of the diode is that or property of the diode is that it conducts current flow in only one direction. So it conducts the current uh, from, let's say, anode to the cathode right over here. You have the current when it is turned on, the current I flows from anode to the cathode. Similarly, for the Zener diode, you it can conduct the current from anode to cathode, but then it acts as a normal diode just like. But then what is the speciality of Zener diode when reverse bias, when the positive potential um, applied on the cathode is greater than the negative potential. So there is this reverse bias. You have the current flowing in which this thinner diode is utilized for the uh, re uh, for the regulation purpose, for example. So that's the so there are uh, uh, variety of applications of a diode. One is called as rectification. Another is the switching. So I just said that you put a positive voltage on the diode. For example, here, you put a positive voltage right here with respect to cathode and you have the current conduction that acts as a switch right here. Here is an example of how diode can be used as a rectifier. So you see that you got the uh, rectifier, a bridge rectifier in particular and you got the AC signal applied and you in the output, you have a DC voltage produced. So that's how we'll not see in detail how this circuit will work. We'll instead just see that the circuit acts as a rectifier. So which converts AC into the constant signal that is DC. So there are many types of diodes, LED, what you see right here. This is a simple diode. Then you have a Zener diode. Okay, this again similarly looks like that. Then there is a varactor diode, pin diode, etc. Okay, so uh, 
like i said the diode is universally uh, or uh, on the on the first instant is is a passive device because it doesn't uh, amplify your signal or it doesn't really control or modulate your signal uh, into the circuit uh, it, it just conducts the current but there are special diode if they are biased in such a way, for example, by a varactor or some special diode, if they introduce energy into the circuit or to modulate that energy otherwise, then they can be termed as active component as well. So silicon and germanium, there are these two materials are used to uh, fabricate the diodes, okay? So silicon diode and the germanium diode, there is next point is a IV curve, the I versus V current uh, conducts. So IV curve of the diode is in exponential form. So at some voltage, your diode starts conducting current, which rises exponentially with respect to applied voltage. For the silicon diode, this cutting voltage is approximately 0 0.7 volt for the silicon diode. For the germanium diode, it is approximately 0 0.25 volt, okay? So that's called as turn on voltage of a diode or a cutting voltage of a diode. Now, let us uh, introduce some more passive components. These are resistors, inductors, and the capacitors, okay? So we see uh, what they are and how they work. So obviously, as I said, the passive components are those which do not require external energy. For example, you don't really uh, 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 you don't really need an external signal sources to turn them on. You just put them into the circuit and they will work uh, uh, accordingly uh, according to their properties. For example, if you place the register into the circuit and the current flows into the circuit, that will dissipate the energy. Okay, the next point uh, is that, as I said, these are all these registers, capacitors, and inductors. They are called as uh, passive components. Their usage is for the resistance uh, control or current control energy storage. For example, I just told you the role of a resistor is to dissipate energy when the current flows through it. The role of the inductor or a simply coil is to store the magnetic field when the current flows through it. The role of the uh, capacitor is to store an electrical field when the voltage is ap applied across it, okay? Now, these are called as passive component because these do not introduce or control gain in the circuit. They do not amplify your circuit. They do not uh, filter your circuit or something like that. They, they, they just don't have uh, capacity to introduce or modulate energy into the circuit. Okay, that's why they are called as passive component. So another passive component is connectors, simple wires. You see that this is a piece of conductor. These are the charges uh, flowing through the conductor. Uh, there are these kind of wires. They are also called as connectors. So the function of the connectors is that to establish electrical connections between the two points into the circuit. You see that you place them and make the connections. Examples are wires like this, the terminals and the sockets, etc. So obviously these are again passive components and their purpose is to just allow the energy uh, and the signal flow, but they do not have the capacity to modulate that energy or signal flow. That's why they are called as passive components. So hope you found this model useful to understand the active versus passive components. Uh, and you see that the transistor, diodes, registers, capacitors, inductors, and connectors, we've seen all these components. So write in the comment section, which of these components are active and which of these components are passive. So hope you found this model useful. If you did so, share it with others for a wider reach. Stay tuned for more engaging and informative contents in microelectronics like this. Till then, wish you a very happy learning.